listening to the Today's Mama podcast with your host, Rachel Hersher. This episode is for the makers of all the magic. Moms, that's you. Dads, you too. We've got some real talk about the holidays, and that may or may not include a confession of a late night me crying as I address Christmas cards listening to my Motab Pandora station. So whether you're slaying the holidays or you're ready for a long winter's nap, we've got a light and easy holiday chat in store for you. So enjoy all that and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all. And today I am recording with my sidekick, Aaron, again. And if you're wondering who Aaron is, might I recommend a few past episodes? One specifically entitled All the Things is particularly good. But Aaron, just for those those newcomers here, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Ooh, so much pressure. Uh been with I'm an OG today's mama. I mean, we've been doing this for going on 13 years, right? So Rachel and I are super besties. We can't go anywhere without being mistaken for sisters, which is hilarious because we could Dude. not look any more physically different from each other. Whatever. I think we're merging into each other. The guy who takes care of my trees, uh, because I'm obsessed with my trees. This isn't because I'm like a rich person <laughs> living on a plantation of forested trees. It's because you're um, a giant dork. I can't help. I've had nightmares about like my trees being stolen or dying where I've woken up like crying. (laughs) It's out of control. So I have this legit arborist and his Mm -hmm. name is James. And, um, he, he had seen a Facebook live and listens to the podcast and was like, uh, are you guys related? Are you sisters? (laughs) I was like, no, but you're not the first person to ask. (laughs) Nope. Every time we go anywhere. Um, okay, so Aaron, did you by chance receive anything on your porch last night? Oh my gosh! So I'm sitting <laughs> under, I'm sitting on on the couch, snuggled under a blanket with my kids, and we, which is right in the living room, really pretty, kind of near the near the front door, and we hear the I have a doorbell cam, and I hear the little like notification on my phone, which is across the room that there's that my doorbell has detected a visitor. And then I hear a scuffle. So we start to get off the couch because obviously somebody's about to ring the doorbell because there's like some sort of argument happening on my front porch in hushed tones. (laughs) And I open the door to see that tinsel llama from Target that you were ranting about on Instagram a few weeks ago when I was sending you private messages because you were considering purchasing a Peruvian lit tinsel llama from Target. And I'm like, go home. You need to go home. You're like, yeah, no, she told me not to do it. And like this argument kind of ensued. So I started a poll on Instagram, the kind of yes or go home. And I think go home was winning, right? And mm-hmm. in the end, maybe get the llama prevailed at like 58%. <laughs> so I said, girl, get yourself a llama. Matter of fact, get yourself three. <laughs> <laughs> and so you did. did. And you doorbell ditched a llama onto my front porch last night, which was hilarious because the second I saw it, in fact, I went back and I watched the doorbell video because on the doorbell video, I could see your two daughters like wrestling and arguing with each other about placing the llama. And then then we come to the door and I, it took me about a split second to realize what was happening. And so I look for your car and I start yelling and my kids like run out into the darkness to chase your kids down. And it was so funny. Yeah. So so funny. We knew about your doorbell cam, and that's why my youngest <laughs> put on like uh-huh. this hat we got from Jamaica that had like a Rastafarian hat with really long dreadlocks. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then my ninth grader had refused. I made her put a hat on, but then she just was like not cooperating. So they had their arguments. They did a poor job. No, no they did a no, they did a great job. Had we not been sitting on the couch in a kind of a rare quiet moment, right as it was happening, we wouldn't have like. We would have missed it. It would have you would have been out of the neighborhood, but we just happened to be in the exact right spot. The best part was like we bring in the llama. We have our llama is going to be an indoor llama. 
Because admit now that you've seen that llama in real life, you're afraid oh. someone's going to steal that little buddy. That's right. I don't want. I don't. I don't want to run the risk that somebody else is going to see my authentic lit Peruvian llama and want to steal with it off stockings. My with stockings. So he's in my he's in my living room under the underneath the stockings, and my son made this big production of really wanting to name him. Like he wanted to name him, and I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be like some sort of like. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting John. <laughs> which is John Lama, <laughs> which is what we, which is which is what our Lama is named now. So even this morning, the kids are like, "Good morning, John Lama." <laughs> it's, it's the best, it's the best, and he's very smiley. So it's oh, great. but and he also looks so wise. He's like a wise, smiling Christmas Lama in the corner of my living room now. I'm not mad. Yeah. So I also had the fear once I got home and I, I went to place my own Lama. That he, it's too good, you know, yeah. and it's really running a risk putting it outside. So we have a really big window on the front of our house and I, I put him right up in the window. Picture like the leg lamp, right? From a Christmas <laughs> exactly. story. That's exactly what's happening in your window now. That's what's happening in my front window, except for that it's a light up llama. Now yeah. you were not, our last stop, we took, we took a llama to our friend Bree also, but she was, she's a llama lover. Okay, she like is. she was not sad at all about that llama. And she was telling me, you get that llama. Yeah. So I did. Breeze and But we still doorbell ditched her. My kid, my girls did a better job at that doorbell ditch than they did at yours. Well, I mean, but live what about the sign we made? For Brie? No, on your porch. There was no the, sign on my porch. Uh, somewhere there is a sign left on your porch in their fight that says, Llama Llama Ding Dong, no, Merry Christmas. There's no sign. <laughs> I will bet you the seat of your car. $50. You act like I have some wraparound palatial estate porch. It's not a big porch, dude. Like it fit the llama. It's not there. Well, everybody be sure to check our Instagram story because we're going to post her porch cam <laughs> pictures. So in like the highlights on Instagram, you can kind of archive those story pieces. You can see the original first part of the story. Well, I got her screenshots of us getting caught on her porch and, and some other regal photos of this llama. And then also proof of our sign that it says, Llama Llama Ding Dong, Merry Christmas. I mean, I saw the one. For the world Bree, to see. Bree sent the picture from her living room and I saw it Dude, and I just figured you guys loved her more. I just thought, oh, Bree must be like your daughter's favorite because she, they got a, she got a handmade sign, which is no, fine. My girls got just got fired. Fired. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it was great. Uh, well, let's talk holiday madness for a minute because it's that time of year when um, the magic seems to be w wearing off a little bit for me. <laughs> Is it? I mean, yeah. you were just a, you were in the dark in my neighborhood delivering lit llamas. Like, what happened in the last twelve hours that, like, I mean, that was pretty magical. I'm not gonna lie. No, it was, and that was Christmas magic. And can you also just realize that you just said lit llamas? That's what's on the side of the box. Yeah, because everybody knows those llamas are lit. lit. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, maybe I just packed too much in yesterday, right? Like, I had to. <laughs> I did my my llama, llama llama ding dong drops. And then I had busted a move on like wrapping up a sub for Santa from our neighborhood. And then. Um, I, I'm like, oh, I'm late on the game. So my Christmas cards just came in the mail yesterday. So I stayed up late addressing those. And I had been like making my lists and checking them twice for gifts. Like it's that week before. And my husband came up, bless his heart, about 1115. He'd been enjoying, I think, a, a show of some sort downstairs. And I was madly quickly addressing all my cards. Not madly, not with so much rage, but maybe a little because I knew they were down there enjoying a sitcom of sorts. <laughs> and he's like, hey, I'm all, hey. He's like, what are you doing? I'm all, oh, just being like the the maker of all the magic. That's all. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> no big uh, deal. Oh, uh, <laughs> slowly like backing out of the room. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, sup for Santa, all the cards. Oh, like who's ordered all the presents? Maybe it's me. <laughs> and here's the thing. My husband is probably one of the most helpful creatures on the face of this earth. So I'm not demeaning husbands. I have, I have taken this upon myself, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. every Christmas, this seems to kind of be the case is that I tend to be the organizer of the holiday things. And last night about 1115, I, I hit a resentful point. Uh-oh. 
So I just said, why don't you just go to bed? I'm going to take care of all these cards. Okay? Oh, so you Sleep well. finished addressing your holiday cards out of spite. Always a solid strategy. I hope my Christmas card was addressed in the spirit of love and magic. Because don't send me your spite Christmas card. Don't send me that mojo to my house. Wait till you see my handwriting, Kay. That makes everything better. <laughs> Oh. Anyway, so I'm like, I think I'm to every year I have this thought where I'm like, I'm writing myself a letter for next year so that I'll do better. <laughs> You'll do less is what you always think you're going to do. Yeah, but you know what? There's some things that I do just love. Like I love Christmas cards. I love sending mm-hmm. them. I super love receiving them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, so there's there's some things that I'm, yeah, some years are better than others. That's all I'm going to say. There's a lot going on. I, this is this is definitely a big year. You have a lot of things, especially because now your kids are at the age where not only do you have the legitimate Christmas magic that you're trying to execute on, but now you've got teenagers. So you're going to like winter formals and there's a whole other layer now on top of it that I think it feels like from the outside looking in that you're juggling. And that's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of juggle happening at the Hersher household this week. I'm not going to lie. That is not happening. Over yeah. For this whole month, I feel little. like. Yeah, we've had something on the calendar every day of the month. Yeah, yeah, and you've got a lot. You, you have me. a lot of the higher stakes stuff. Whereas my kids are still in that age where they're where they're really pumped about like the existence of Reese's peanut butter bells in their lunchbox. I mean, like it's a pretty, we're, still, we're still we're still riding the easy train over here. Well, like, okay. Quick caveat: what describe your feelings about the Reese's trees with Reese's pieces inside of them. Here's the thing. I'm not a Reese's pieces fan. So I'm not, I don't gravitate towards those. I'm just, I'm a purist. I'm a like Reese's trees or Reese's mini cups purist. Same. So I think that's probably the thing that tipped me over the edge last night, Uh to be honest. I had (laughs) saved myself sweet little king size pack of Reese's trees (laughs) to right? Because the peanut butter ratio is so, so good. Unbeknownst to me, they happen to be Reese's pieces trees and Mm. it ruined everything. I don't like the pieces in my tree. Yeah. I don't blame you. I've seen those on the store shelves and just thought, no, I'm good. Like it's fine. Uh, I mean, I've been eating Hershey kisses for about a week straight for lunch, just bagged by the bag full. So I feel like I should probably dial that back. So, well, lucky for me, I hate Hershey's kisses. (gasps) No. Love They're them. Disgusting. Oh, bite your tongue. They're magical. <laughs> I will not. Well, I'm glad that you spite wrote your Christmas cards. That's great. No, Maybe. there's still a whole lot of love in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, how are you? How are you feeling? What's your Christmas like status update? My Christmas status update. I'm. I am done Christmas shopping. I have. I have a handful of things left to wrap, but not a lot, like just a really a small amount. I've got the kids stuff all wrapped because as we've talked about before on the podcast, I am divorced. I share uh, 50, 50 custody with my kids. And so I, I have them leading into the Christmas holiday and I knew that I wasn't going to want to spend the time that I had with them staying up really late so that I could pull gifts out and be wrapping presents um, after their bedtime. Cause they're getting a little bit older and I'm also getting old. And so, so that makes, I mean, I kind of want to go to bed by like 1030. I just do. Yeah. So the, the days of like staying up till some crazy, crazy late time to wrap all the gifts leading up to Christmas, just that part I have retired. That isn't, that holds no more magic for me. So I, I was really careful about making sure that I got my Christmas shopping done early enough that I could be wrapping gifts when my kids were away so that I could just turn my entire kitchen and dining room into like Santa's workshop and have a good kind of assembly line of it. And then the presents are all wrapped and ready to go. So now when we spend the the leading up to the holiday together, we can just go do the fun things and go see Mary Poppins and we're going to go see some Christmas lights and we're going to um, spend some time with my folks and our tradition is Christmas Eve lasagna. So we have a lot of really fun stuff planned. And now I get to like put all of the hustle and bustle behind me. Um, cause I've been kind of methodical about protecting this time. So I'm feeling a little easier right now, but yeah, honestly, for you, of, Aaron. I mean, for I'm you. 39 and this is the first <laughs> Christmas I've had that sensation. So I feel like I deserved it. I anyway. did drop a whole load of Christmas cards in the mail today. Did and actually, I do want to just share a quick hack. I don't know that I've, if I've invented this. I might have or not. Um, but like 
who licks their envelopes? No one. That's gross. <laughs> and I'm sorry, if you lick your envelopes, your tongue probably is going to get some disease. Um, or not. <laughs> <laughs> but there's also these little like tubes you can buy that have water and you can just like, you know, use those to get it wet and then seal it. But I couldn't see any of those. So I had this idea. I got a microfiber rag and I dip it just in a little cup of water and then I would seal, put that on the sticky part of the envelope and then seal my envelope. And it was so smooth. I sealed all those envelopes in seriously like five minutes, like NBD. There you go. I mean, yeah. is this the point where you want me to mention that, like, there's a whole lot of Christmas card providers that will send you envelopes that have a sticky, like, just tape line that you just pull like a... Oh, but that's, like, super environmentally unfriendly, don't you feel? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just saved the strip on each one, right? Like, that's probably yes, a little you bit of a tree. Go, go outside and hug your trees after this episode of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you and your arborist. Uh, he's so smart. He has a majestic beard. I mean, he's from Oregon, which is where I think true tree lovers have to be from. Um, even though I'm not from Oregon, but I have some <laughs> Oregonian trees in my yard. <laughs> I think I think you may have breathed too much envelope glue last night. Like I think your brain's a little cooked. Can you can you uh, take a power girl. cat today? <laughs> no, it is. My power cat is coming. Good. Um in like an hour and a half, I will retire from my power cat Good. and my door will be locked and my children will be exiled and I will, <laughs> I'll emerge a new woman. <laughs> so awesome. at least hopefully we've uh, represented a couple demographics out there, the prepared and the unprepared. And you know, when you're feeling unprepared, let me just say this in all my spite, you guess what I did? I threw on my headphones, put a little Motab on. For those of you, that's the Mormon Tabernacle Choir who has been renamed the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. Now, I don't care what religion you are, dude. That, those Christmas, you choose Tabernacle Choir, Christmas Station on Pandora, and those are the most heavenly Christmas tunes that who could even be mad anymore. So when were you listening to those? Pretty much all the time now, just to keep oh, okay. myself grounded. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> were you listening to them when Mark cruised upstairs and you turned around and were like, oh, no big deal. Just over here. No, that was after. That was after. <laughs> after he like reversed out of the room. I was like, you know what? I need to bring it down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bring like, it uh, right down. Is, I think we're going to listen to a couple hymns. This just seems like, seems like the right time. Good job. Oh, dude. David Archuleta throws down like an angels in their realms of glory kind of song that I'll just say at that point, I started just crying, sealing my envelopes. So good. (laughs) You're listening to the Today's Mama podcast with your host, Rachel Hersher. We'll be back right after this. We inherit lots of things from our families. My green eyes come from my mom, my blonde hair, some distant Scandinavian ancestor, I'm sure. I hope I got my grandmother's resilience. I also inherited her potato roll recipe, and it's like a three-day process. (laughs) With all that in mind, we've put together a big collection of holiday recipes. Recipes inherited from our mothers and grandmothers, the stuff that yells home and holidays the minute it hits your lips. We're featuring recipes from our staff, from other bloggers, and from you too. This is all in an effort to remind you to think about what you've inherited. All that good stuff and the stuff you want to plan for too. So if you have a family member who's had breast cancer under the age of 50, your mom, your aunt, your grandmother, there's a chance there's a gene mutation that might be present in your family. If so, this may not only increase your own personal risk, it means the risk could be passed along to the next generation. Myriad Genetics Hereditary Cancer Quiz helps you to assess whether you might be a good candidate for testing. This quiz can help you get the information you need to discuss your risk of cancer with your healthcare provider and help you take the steps to prevent it. Take the Myriad Hereditary Cancer Quiz, snag some classic holiday recipes, and enter to win a huge pile of bright and shiny prizes valued up to $2,000 by visiting todaysmama.com slash myrisk. Brought to you by Myriad Genetics. And now back to the Today's Mama podcast with your host, Rachel Hersher. So this episode 
episode's going to be pretty quick. We wanted to check in, share a little bit of that holiday madness, see how everybody's doing. Also, maybe talk about a couple shows that we're going to be watching over the next week or two, because I think, you know, we're going to take the next two weeks off ho- like like a true holiday, and our next episode will be back um, the first week of January. Mm-hmm. Um So be sure to go back and check the archive. There's so many good episodes. I'm sure you haven't listened to all of them. Um, But before we let you go, let's just talk shows for a minute because this is the next couple weeks. It's it's downtime. Good time to do some binge watching, to hit the theaters. Like what's what's on your radar, Aaron? So one of the things that the kid so I watch a show with my kids every night. We snuggle in bed and we watch we watch a show together. And we have over the years moved through a couple shows. Uh, one that we are, if you are a Star Wars fan and have never watched the Clone Wars animated series, it's fantastic. I highly recommend. I think there's six seasons of that out and available. We've also, this over the summer, we watched, it's a three season series. It's a Netflix original called The Troll Hunters. And it was so, so good. And I'd always skipped over it because you know how they have the little preview image on Netflix. And I was always like, what is this crazy pantsness? I'm not watching that. And finally we had sort of run out of something and we just started it and had no expectation. And it is just the best show. Uh, it's, it's, I like to watch shows with my kids that I actually enjoy watching. Um, there's some shows that i let them watch on their own, but then there's, there's ones that we try to watch as a family and, and the troll hunters is really, really fantastic. If you're looking for something to kind of snuggle in and binge watch with the family, but a new one on Netflix they have made a updated Shira series. What? It is the best. I'm I'm not joking. It my kids and I, we watch it, we laugh. My son watches it as well. I have an almost eight-year-old son. He loves it. My almost eleven year old daughter loves it. We laugh. Does He Man make good appearances humor. in She-Ra or only She-Ra makes appearances in He-Man? I don't know. I'm not a She-Ra He-Man diehard fan so i don't remember a lot of the 80s those were my days dude those were my days oh i had don't get me wrong like i had the action i had the she action figure i had the swift wind uh, uh what about this is from he-man but i had like a couple little orcos remember him no he I was do like not. the little ghosty guy he was fantastic but the she animated series the netflix original that they that they have just released there's one season out my kids and I, we just can't get enough of it. We laugh. It's so good. It's so funny. Um, and one of the things that's kind of interesting is I had read an article about it that they they went out of their way to draw the characters because it's a lot of it's a lot of female characters because the series is She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, and so it's a, it's like it's She-Ra and then it's these various princesses from these various realms, and so there's a lot of female characters, and they went out of their way to draw a variety of body types and I didn't think much of it when I was reading in the was reading the article but then as I watched it I, I it, it, it kind of makes you realize bless I you'll never find a bigger Disney fan than me but if you go and you look at all the movies and you look at every every princess they're kind of this very exaggerated very very small frame and when you watch she you realize like oh there's so there's different heights and different body sizes and it's just this and they're not overt Refreshing. about it. Like there's no part of it. There's no part of you that if, if you didn't read this article or if you don't hear me mentioning it, you're probably not going to realize it. Um, Cause they don't, they don't go out of their way. They don't, they don't reference it. I mean, it's a kid's cartoon, but you just, as a parent watching it, you think this is really awesome. Like it's really awesome that there's all sorts of different, just people on that screen. And that's pretty wonderful. And they're all, you know, it's, I can't say enough good stuff about it. I just have really, really enjoyed it. And my and this comes from a woman who it. is six feet tall and <laughs> th- who's raising a daughter who will probably be over six feet tall and is like a Kung Fu ninja. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is yeah. it Kung Fu? It's Taekwondo. She, she does Taekwondo. taekwondo. I'm sorry. Taekwondo. I call it a different thing every time. I think I've been like jujitsu. Yeah, it's Taekwondo. But like, it, and, and, and maybe I am more sensitive to it because I'm raising such tall kids that I you know, I try to kind of remind them at various times in parenting them. I've had to remind them like, Hey, you, you know, you, you are bigger. You got to be a little more careful on the playground and um, you know, you're taller. Don't pick your friends up tall. and throw them, please. Don't, yes. <laughs> Joe, please don't be picking up anybody and chucking them. He doesn't, but it's just a really great show. And I love seeing that perspective and it's just, and it's, and it's great for so many other reasons other than that. I mean, there have been some lines in that show that have made us just like cackle out loud. And then my kids will repeat them for the next week. Super fun. So that's a good, that's a really good family one. My family has also been watching 
we watch the great British baking show and we always have, and it's on Netflix and it's on PBS and we love it so, so much. And it's not only just because it's, we like cooking shows and we like to cook. Both my kids really like to cook and we like to be in the kitchen, but it's such a sweet show. It's a baking competition. And my mom had told me about it for years. If you haven't watched the great British baking show, it's a baking competition. And I was sort of, I was really resistant to the idea because I've, you've, you've seen a million of those, right? And it's, it's either weird ingredients or the judge is screaming at you or whatever. This is not that. This is sweet and peaceful and kind. And my, my kids will call it out. Like my daughter will tell me watching it. She'll be like, I love that they help each other. You know, they're competing, but like somebody's cake will start to fall or somebody is upset and they have tears in their eyes. And another baker will come over and be like, what can I, I can do the flowers. Like, let me help, let me help you or here. And, and it's so, it's just so good in this day and age where I think we're struggling to think about how do we help our kids understand like how to be kind or how to not to bully or how to handle things to have that show that is, that is really kind of serving up fun cooking really also be this like really fantastic demonstration of like kindness or fun or whimsy and creativity because also the judges that are judging that competition are pretty are really hardcore right there it's not that it's like there's no there's no participation trophies on this but they have a way of being able to give criticism in such a kind way and I try to I try to point those things out to my kids because I think that's a really important thing for them to see and notice and that is just one of those like very bingeable shows that we love so much and even if you're not necessarily like a foodie or somebody that really likes to cook and bake. They're just such great shows. So those are my, those are my family picks. So here's what I love. Here's what I love about that (laughs) is you, you're really setting a really good high bar and (laughs) for good or for bad, here's what's been playing at my house. (laughs) So arrested development. (laughs) That's my favorite. Reminder that my kids are 16, 14. Now the nine-year-old is not watching it, but she did happen to wander into the Buster episode where his hand's been bitten off by a seal (laughs) and he's adjusting to his hook. And so like everybody at my house the last couple of weeks has been holding up like a stubby hand and being like, I'm a monster. (laughs) And my nine-year-old can retell you. And then they caught the shark. They they thought they caught the seal, but he's eaten by a shark. So all they had was a fin. And I'm like, dude, we are the worst. No, you're not the worst. That is that is such funny, funny shows. It such funny has been comedy. Truly entertaining. Um, you so- have a responsibility to teach your children th- like the right kind of funny. Like by all means, show them Arrested Development. Like let them enjoy the nuanced humor because I mean, there is nothing funnier than. And I keep joking around with my 16 year old that we're going to Mother Boy. Mother Boy. <laughs> <laughs> like, that show is just, it's a gift. It is a gift. It keeps on giving over and over. Uh huh. Absolutely. So funny. Um, okay, I cut you off though. You had a couple other shows you were going to recommend. Well, again, because I admit this is now, let me be clear. I am now going to talk about the non family friendly shows team. So everybody let's, let's be clear. These are, these are the ones that you watch with your grown up time. Um, I've only watched one episode of it, but it was really good. And I can't wait to watch a whole bunch more, but it's the bodyguard on Netflix. Do not go down the Whitney Houston path with me, Rachel Hersher. It's a different show. It's It's from, it's from BBC. And so this is a kind of intense drama kind of crime crimey drama but i've only watched the one episode but i've also read a ton about it saying like it was it was so fantastic um over on the bbc network that they moved it over and got it in in the u.s on netflix as fast as they could and so it's on now those are some of the things that i have been binge watching that i've really enjoyed and i would love like i'd love more recommendations because i just netflix is a gift especially in these dark winter days Yeah. So actually in our show notes, we'll put all these recommendations, but there's also a section for comments. So listeners, if you have any fantastic recommendations, please click over to the show notes, which you can always find at todaysmama.com slash podcast, and then just select the episode. Now, really quick though, movies, we are going to the Grinch tonight. Okay. I'll be interested to see what you think of that. I haven't seen it. It's $5 Tuesday. So we hit the luxury theaters for five bucks with the heated seats. Dang. That is a tip I need to write down. Yeah, that's like statewide, bro. And I don't know for all you listeners in in other lands outside this great land of Utah, um, if you have like a $5 day of the week, it's a blessing. And also one of the things that we've talked about, the movie pass. We didn't get one this Mm -hmm. year, but there's been that whole talk. Maybe that's a 2019 thing. 
Um, and then, of course, Mary Poppins is coming. I mean, honestly, I couldn't be more excited about any movie than that yes. one. Yes. We're going to see that on uh, Friday. The kids are out of school. All right. Well, we we wrapped this episode pretty short and sweet. We wish everybody the best holidays. Um, and we will be back in a couple weeks. And like I said, make sure you hit the show notes and share with us what you're doing when on this winter break or what you're watching. Um, Aaron, any parting thoughts for our listenership? The holidays are glorious and wonderful and full of magic, but please cut yourself some slack moms and dads and all the people that are listening. Like you're doing enough. You love your kids. You are, you're sprinkling magic and wonderfulness on everything and just give yourself a high five and cut yourself some slack team. Merry yeah, Christmas. Don't end up in a pile of, <laughs> of Motab induced tears over your Christmas cards. <laughs> yeah. You know, feeling the spirit of Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Maybe dial that back. <laughs> Yeah, everything's going to be okay, guys. See you in 2019. Merry Christmas. As always, you can get the show notes and features at todaysmama.com slash podcast. Remember to like, rate, subscribe, all the things, and we'll catch you next week. You've been listening to the Today's Mama podcast with Rachel Hersher. To find out more, go to todaysmama.com. That's today's M-A-M-A dot com. Today's Mama, connecting moms and families with the best of today. Today's Mama.